Hey, what's going on, guys? The Horror Man back putting a positive spin on Gotti. Gotti is a 2018 film about the rise and fall of the Teflon Don, John Gotti. I found this Blu-ray DVD combo pack at Dollar Tree a long time ago, and obviously it's the Canadian release, which is why it also has the French title on the cover. The movie currently has a 4.8 out of 10 rating on IMDb. And prior to watching this for the first time, I had heard nothing but negative reviews. People supposedly walked out of the theater when watching it, and it was criticized for allegedly being one of the worst films of the last decade. No matter how many times Jason and I say we're not going to fall for it, we do. We listened to the haters. Based on all that negativity, we really were not looking forward to watching this one. The movie has basically gained a reputation as a running joke. But guys, I don't get it. As a huge fan of similar Italian movies or mafia movies like The Godfather films, Goodfellas, Casino... Gotti is right up there for me. I'm not saying it's better than those, obviously, but it doesn't pale that much in comparison. I really, really enjoyed this film. That just makes it all the more easier to give it a positive spin. Gotti was directed by Kevin Connolly. If that name sounds familiar, it's because of one of two things. Either you remember him as Eric in Entourage, or you know him because of the controversy. I mean, he's done plenty of other stuff as well, but those are the two standouts. Chances are we'll discuss him more in a Controversial View video at some point in the future. My point is, his name attached to the film brings intrigue right off the bat. I thought John Travolta as John Gotti was absolutely fantastic. Jason even said he thought he deserved an Oscar for this, and I get it. Others seemed to be split on his performance. Some loved him like we did, and others thought he was horrible. If you ask me, this is one of his greatest performances ever. Kelly Preston was also fantastic. I thought it was cool that they cast Travolta's real-life wife as his movie wife. I almost didn't recognize her, but she looked as beautiful as always, and I loved her accent in this. Rest in peace to Kelly Preston. Honestly, the performances were really good across the board. Spencer Rocco LaFranco, as John's son John, was another standout. The narration, and just the movie in general, has a huge Goodfellas vibe. Only, obviously, instead of revolving around Henry Hill, it revolves around John Gotti. It even features multiple time jumps, like Goodfellas. There is some great graphic violence as you might expect in a movie like this. I liked the Hannibal the Cannibal reference early in the film. I love that the movie covers major holidays. We get Halloween, Christmas, 4th of July, and Christmas again. Of course, Christmas sequences are obligatory in Italian movies like this one. Once again, it has that in common with Goodfellas as well as The Godfather, The Many Saints of Newark, and others. Christmas is a big deal for Italian families. Believe me, I know. The movie establishes the time periods well. Something like this is comfort food for me. 
There are some effectively emotional moments, starting with the death of John's young son. This movie has heart. It's not just mindless entertainment. I love the vintage news reports throughout, many of which were real. There are lots of true-to-life situations and locations for Italians. Again, believe me, I know. The court scenes are very intense. The setup of the Castellano hit and the build-up to it is suspenseful. I love the nomination scene when John is promoted to boss of the family. Again, the locations, the sets, all authentic to Italian culture. I love the baptism scene when young John becomes a made man. Then, like Christmas, we get the obligatory wedding scene featured in many Italian movies like this. The fallout after John is convicted is brutal to watch, as all of his men are killed off one by one. Of course, his son, now with a family of his own, is also a target. This is probably my favorite portion of the entire movie. I love House of the Rising Sun playing during the funeral procession. It's so cool seeing actual footage of the John Gotti supporters, the way they're praising him and truly making sense. And finally, the last positive I want to mention is the ending, which is so damn awesome. As the closing credits began, Jason and I both said, wow, I'll say it again, I don't get it. If mafia movies are not your thing, fine. Then you probably shouldn't review one if you do watch it. All you're doing in that case is a disservice to the movie and a disservice to others who might have been interested. I mean, you wouldn't, or at least you shouldn't, go to a restaurant, order something you know you don't like, and then complain that the food sucks. Whatever. It is what it is. Unfortunately, people are drawn to negativity. I personally thought Gotti was great, but you don't have to agree. This is just my positive spin. Please be sure to check out Jason's as well to hear his thoughts. Yes, that's disappointment you hear in my voice. This movie deserved better from its audience. It's incredible how the real John Gotti himself had a much better reputation than the movie made about his life. Have you seen Gotti? If so, what do you think of it? Comment below and let me know. To which hated movie will we next give a positive spin? Check back soon to find out. Until then, remember, physical media matters. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and be kind. Subscribe. <laughs>